a sort of a coincidence, but I happened to be a uh, what was called a Fairchild Fellow at Caltech uh, when Hawking was a visitor there and uh, when black holes were just discovered. And it was a very interesting time because there was a lot of excitement in the air. And I did a little calculation and I discovered a couple of facts about black holes which weren't mentioned and I thought I'd mention them now. One is, what's it like inside a black hole? Does anyone know? Well, we're all in one because it turns out that if you look up somewhere the mass of the universe, uh, you'll discover that it results in a black hole which is about the size of the universe. So we actually live inside a black hole. So just a little detail here. So black holes can have black holes inside of them. Because that's Okay, now what I'm going to talk about is completely different. Um, there's something I call discrete space-time state physics. This is if you assume that um, you have a kind of atomic theory of space and time, that space is discrete and time is discrete, uh, then uh, there are a bunch of other interesting conclusions you can draw. And that's what the idea of my talk is, is to uh, consider that question and what the consequences are. Now, this thing should, what do I press there? Uh, where, where do I press? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a famous statement, uh, one of my favorite quotes, uh, you've heard of Mach for uh, supersonic aircraft uh, go past Mach 1, the speed of sound. Well, that's named after this, this guy, but he is also quite well known because of this statement, which I have quoted up there. So uh, he didn't believe in atoms. Well, there's a little solar system of sorts and various things going around it. Now, uh, all of the laws of physics happen to be exactly reversible. In other words, well, if the planets were all going the other way, they'd still be obeying the laws of physics, okay? But, you know, even though the laws are reversible, it's very, it would be very unusual to see a waterfall like the one in the picture where the water is going up. But it wouldn't be against the laws of physics. It's just that it would be highly unlikely for that to happen. <laughs> very improbable, as it says there. Okay, so now other things we've learned that matter is made out of atoms. A long time ago, there was a bit of debate, you know, sort of intellectual debate amongst people. Did matter, could you divide matter continually? Well, it turned out, no, matter is made out of atoms. And if you divide an atom, it's not that atom anymore. It's something else. So likewise, light is made out of photons. Electricity is electrons. Well, what about space and time? Are they discrete? Well, that's something we don't really know. There's reasons to believe maybe they are and reasons to believe maybe they're not. But uh, so far, lots of things we used to think were continuous, we've discovered are discrete. I don't think we've discovered anything the other way. Do we have something else here? Yeah. Okay. This is what I call a universal cellular automata. Uh, well, this one may or may not be universal. Let me tell you what universal means. A cellular automata is something where you have a little rule that governs how things change. And each cell is maybe, as in the picture there, is either a black or white. 
and there's some rule that governs this change. Okay, so, and you can get all kinds of effects by programming these cellular automata. Sometimes they look like cells, but sometimes they look sort of like pictures because you're looking at it from a distance, really. And they can do all kinds of things. What can, they, what can a cellular automata do? Well, there's a very easy way to find out because there's a thing called universal, which is a word that's normally applied to computers. A computer is universal if it can, if it has enough memory, do anything that any other computer could do. And it turns out all the computers we know and use are all universal in that sense because it doesn't take much to make a universal computer. <coughs> so anything that could be computed can be computed by a universal computer if it has enough memory. That's the only if. Okay, and of course it might be very slow or very fast, we don't know. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, explore the following question. Is it possible that maybe we live in a computer or something, uh, that th the universe is some kind of computer and it's just computing the future and so on? Well, if that were the case, it would very likely be a cellular automata because we know that the laws of physics are independent of where you are and uh, that's the way a cellular automata works. So, and cellular automata we know can make, can be universal and can compute anything any other computer might compute. Okay. So, if, um, if we were, a s if, if, you know, ultimately space and time are cellular automata, then um, there would be certain kinds of strange things. There's quantum mechanics, which is uh, kind of uh, a fact of physics at most microscopic levels. And um, what if it were a cellular automata, it would behave, it could behave something like uh, uh, quantum mechanics, but it would be different because it would be what I call unknowable determinism. In other words, uh, at the level of quantum mechanics, you replace random by the fact that there's no way, see, the hallmark of quantum mechanics is that events happen and you can't predict them. There's a particle and it's going to decay sometime in the next few minutes, but when exactly is it can't be predicted and nothing affects it. So other than it just suddenly decays sometime. So um, if everything were a deterministic cellular automata, uh, it could replicate physics like that to observers within the system. They couldn't tell any difference between that system and ours if it were uh, sufficiently microscopic. So, so we can assume that maybe if, if things were cellular automata, it would have something I call unknowable determinism. Uh, and and that the and that would be the thing that replaces the randomness of quantum mechanics. Okay. Now I just okay. One of the most interesting facts about the laws of physics to me is the fact that every microscopic law of physics is reversible. Now, we don't see rainstorms where the rain gathers up from the ground and flows and runs up into the clouds and disappears that way. <laughs> okay. 
and we don't see waterfalls going up. So we don't see reversibility at gross levels. But if you look at the planets, and you see a movie of the planets going around the sun, if you play the movie backwards, it's not violating any laws of physics. Because uh, the truth is, uh, all the laws of physics that describe how things move are, are reversible in this sense. If you made a movie of it and you played it backwards, it's not violating any, that picture isn't violating any laws of physics. It might be very improbable because we very seldom see an egg that you dropped onto the floor suddenly jump up, get into the shell, the shell closes in its back in an egg. No, <laughs> once you break the egg, it's broken. But the laws of physics say anything could go backwards. It's just unlikely, but it doesn't violate the laws. Okay, so that gives me reason to believe that, you know, underlying everything could be some microscopic cellular automata that was certainly reversible. And back in the, when I first had that idea, it wasn't, no one had ever known about a cellular automata that was reversible. So <laughs> one of my first tasks was to invent one. And that was pretty easy, actually. Just no one ever worried about it before. Okay, so what I would like to suggest is that if you imagine a world where you have uh, quantized space and time, and where so and everything in it is an integer in a sense is quantized, not like continuous variables. You can emulate everything we know in physics. It's just that it's, a, uh, you know, just like um, when you have water, it looks continuous to us. But then we discover it's made out of atoms. So if we have space and time and somewhere it's not continuous anymore, but it's made up of something like a cellular automata. That's just as reasonable as atomic theory in some sense. And uh, so while our intuition sort of, uh, these ideas don't go along with our intuition, uh, our intuition has been wrong often enough. So this is basically what I work on, is trying to figure out how physics could arise from uh, cellular automata and be where you have discrete space and time and so on. And uh, basically, uh, that kind of investigation hasn't run into any real problems in that we've been able to figure out ways that all the things we see uh, make sense this way or the conventional way. So that's pretty much what I have to say, and if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Any? I hope so. <laughs> yes. Wait, I, you know, I can't hear you. So talk, talk into it. Uh, talk right into it. A little better. 
One more time. Okay, is that better? That, that yes. Your voice. Okay, fair enough. So my, my issue is that under philosophy, there's an ontological issue here is that two things can't call of each other. If you had reversibility of time to achieve what you were talking about, I don't see that it's important. I don't see that the reversibility of, of the laws of physics is in fact very relevant. Uh, but maybe there's some aspect that I'm not getting there. What I'm saying is because two things can't cause each other, you couldn't have something go one way and then turn around and go back the other way. You may get some local thing which looks like that. There's no problem with that, but that's not necessarily reversibility in time. Well, Wait, let, let, me, let me just explain. All of the laws of microscopic physics are reversible. If you have a movie of the planets going around the sun and you play it backwards and you show it to a physicist, he'll say, that's, that's perfectly okay. It's obeying the laws of physics, okay? And in fact, anything that, you, that happens can happen backwards. Just as you are born and you die, this could all happen backwards. It's just, it's very unlikely. That's the only reason you don't see it, is it's unlikely. It's not that it violates any laws of physics. Okay? What? Well, w when this started, when I thought about uh, computers being um, a model of microscopic physics or computation being a model, uh, there was a problem. Everyone then knew that computing was irreversible, but the laws of physics are all reversible. If you have a movie of the planets going around the sun, and you play it backwards, it doesn't violate the laws of physics, okay? And the only thing, as I mentioned before, it's true for every process in physics, except it's very unlikely that you would see a waterfall going backwards. It just doesn't violate the laws, okay? So, um, so I don't have a problem then, because in other words, physics is on my side <laughs> in this issue, okay? In other words, reversibility is just a well-known property of the laws of physics, and all physicists know that, yes? Other question? <laughs> Good catch. Okay, uh, non-locality, uh, I, uh, you know, okay, there's some kind of non-quantum effect there. Okay, I don't know, I can't, I can't explain non-locality, uh, and, and so it, it gives me, makes me uncomfortable to think about it, actually. So, um, and, and the idea that, you know, you can do something here that instantaneously changes something light years away uh, just doesn't seem to me to make sense. 
Uh, so I, I know quantum mechanics well enough to know uh, what, what, why people think such things, but I don't believe in it myself. And I don't see, you know. Uh, why, why is the, I mean, um, what is the um, space of this kind of illusion? So it's just kind of created because it helps us understand. Well, we don't see it. In other words, if you, if you want to have, uh, you, we can dream up things that should be possible to do according to the laws as some people understand them, as most people do. But the, these are things no one's ever seen. In other words, these are thought experiments, Gedanken experiments. Except non locality is proven by experiment. What? It's proven by experiment. By w Staring, for instance, and nowadays uh, in quite many occasions. So it's quite established fact of quantum mechanics, I would say. <laughs> Okay, well, I've looked at a lot of the experiments, and um, to me, I, you know, I still somehow doubt that uh, what they think is happening is actually happening. Because, um, you know, I, I, well, anyway, I don't want to go into this because that's, you know, too specialized. We could talk about it sometime later. Go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the talk. Uh, just one comment. You do know that time is virtual is not a it's not considered in the standard model, right? It's it's broken. Is no, I don't. Ah, okay. So it is. So. What do you mean by it's broken? Uh, there are some processes that they do not affect time dimension. Oh, I don't know of them. What? Yeah, you will meet here at the uh, coming weekend to discuss about it. Oh. Sunday. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it, uh, I, I thank you very much. For Thank you. For your presentation.